And I remember, uh, you know, I got refried out of the military because um, I spoke out of mental health. That's the only thing I did wrong on my 34 year career. And I talked about it in one of the episodes. Uh, Cause some people in my work didn't like me doing it, but I continued. Mm, yeah. And the able channel filmed a documentary on me and they released it on veterans day. And then two weeks later, I was notified. I was uh, refreded. Right. I don't believe in coincidence. Oh no, there's, uh, there's no, there's still um, the leadership is still very, very mm-hmm. um, they're, they're just still, you know, they give lip service, for, but they cut looking out for number reason. one. Yeah. yeah. Um, a, a lot of the leadership has never, ever, um, you know, unfortunately, some of it's, and it sounds like you were in TRADOC, some of it is um, TRADOC people who have never yeah. served yeah. Um, in a backfield. And, and, you know, and no offense, no offense to, to TRADOC, you know, but I had some of the most difficult, some of my most difficult problems were TRADOC sergeants major who had never, that, that was, their, this was their first time in a, in a combat zone and I had to work with them regarding um, the logistics specifically around their, the building of their living quarters and things like that. So um, they were, they were difficult. No, no, again, no offense to trade off, but um, you know, you can't I mean, them. I don't it's, care. it's a different, it's a different thing. You asked well, what I, well, what I, I mean, look, here, here's my case. I was CW4 when I forced retired. I was number one on the promotion list in the CW5 slot with a voucher. Right. And number one on o- OERs. Why would I, I, I why was I we fretted? Right. Yeah. There, there's not a there's not a reason. People don't want to hear the truth and yeah. and they don't want to uh there it scares them and it scares the leadership. Yeah. Um that you know their their mission is to make everything look rosy and good mm-hmm. and, and recruit more recruits and and that's why you hear nothing except, uh, you know, on commercials, on army commercials, except for, you know, hey, we're going to pay, you know, you were going to pay for your college. And, you know, it's it's Private Benjamin, you know, all over yeah. the, if yeah. anybody's ever seen that movie, you know, she, she wanted to know, you know, where are the, where are the hotels and yeah. <laughs> all of that. She, uh, so it's. Hey, it's Joe, not, if you haven't seen that movie, you got to go and watch it now. It, it so is. Which one? Private, Private Benjamin. Benjamin. It's definitely uh, with, with, with Goldie Hawn, right? With Goldie, Goldie Hawn. Hawn. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, watch it with your watching. wife. She'll get a kick out of it. Is it's it funny. better than Stripes? Nothing's it's, better than Stripes. Nothing's better than Stripes. Nothing it's is better, better than, than Stripes. Stripes. But Stripes was good because, and, and I can see how you could identify, you know, I used to hate uh, Cheech and Chong when I was, you know, before I became an adult. And even as a young adult, I'd be like, I could not identify with Cheech and Chong. And now yeah. I love Cheech and Chong. Um I, what you asked what I do. Um, well, I, I do, if I can run or if I can work out or whatever, I will work out and run, but, and that's, if I'm alone, one of the things I really learned was the best was to create a list of people who I can connect with and who I can, and who I can be crazy with. So immediately not, and I just don't, unless I'm at work or something, but even if I'm at work, I can shut my door and I can call somebody or I can just, um, and, and even saying, and I said this to my boyfriend the other day and I didn't know why I was so triggered. Um, I, some, I was super triggered and I couldn't figure out what it was. It was Thanksgiving and, and it was literally, I did not know, but it was the 21st or it was around Thanksgiving. And my office was having a big, huge dinner thing at, at my facility uh, one of the things I do is take care of a very large, uh, I have a leadership that take, you know, that works for me underneath me that takes care of a large conference center. And so the city who I work for was, we were having our Thanksgiving meal there and it was the 21st of November. I didn't put it all together, but my boyfriend came and I was so happy that he came, but I was like super edgy and Hyper vigilant and feeling really bad and um, almost kind of almost in tears the whole time. And I kept thinking, what in the actual fuck is wrong with me? My boyfriend is here. I'm, you know, I look great. I mean, you know, it's like a lot of work. I look good, you know, <laughs> things going great. And I just pulled him into my office and I shut the door and I walked over and I go, I am really triggered. And he's, you know, just helped, he helped me. 
<laughs> because he gets it. Um, I said, I don't know why, but I'm triggered. And that helped. It just, it took it away. It, it just getting that out, just those words. So I'm triggered. <laughs> like even yep. right now, I'm triggered. And, and that actually, uh, I don't know if that, you know, actually is a tool, but just saying that has it, it and for me, it's kind of, I get in the way of getting triggered by even going earlier and say, I'm getting ready to get triggered. Meaning for me, those triggers normally result in a, uh, a pretty, uh, violent, you know, verbally outburst. So, and the shirt, you know, the quit being a triggered pansy shirt. The thing I've started saying is, oh, that message is not for everybody else. This is, this is a message to me is to, you know, don't, we all get triggered. Just don't be a pansy about it. Like the shirt says. So there is something, there is something to that acknowledging to the universe. Even I'm, I'm triggered and mm -hmm. that record, maybe it's just something as simple as you recognize it, then you can deal with it. If you yeah, don't recognize wow. it, you can't deal with it. Yeah. And it's, it was just a matter of, of five, you know, of five minutes. And, and mm. I just, it, something, it just shifted the energy for me, it allowed me to focus, and and I mean, I think it opened up a, a it, it made me a hole. You know, it made me a hole to get in. Uh, um, where so I was I was not alone, and and I think probably the worst thing about these tr triggers, hey, the worst thing about these triggers is the is that isolation, that feeling that you are just alone and it and so when you connect i think that's the most important thing you can do is connect with somebody who gets it you cannot and even if it's a civilian who just can sit there and just be silent and be with you and you know that that's worth something it doesn't have to be a veteran it helps when it's a veteran because you don't have to explain it but yeah. but if your yeah. friend is is you know they get it and they get you and they're there for you and they got your back that's probably the most important thing. The other thing is learning presence, learning presence meditations. Um, yeah, there are so many different presence meditations and they change your brain chemistry. They literally, it's called neuroplasticity. And if you can do a quick 30 second or 60 second presence meditation, it brings you back to the present. Um, it anchors you in the present. We aren't there we aren't in you know there's not it doesn't mean anything about us I think the narratives about what it means when we're in those triggers what does this mean about me you know yeah. um, it doesn't mean anything about us it means it other than you know because right now we are right here right now we life is now it is never not now yeah you know, it's, 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 it's nice that your boyfriend knew that all you needed in that moment was a hug. Yes. Yep. Yeah, you know, he didn't try to fix me. That's, yep. And that's sometimes, you know, I think, especially for men, right? Men always want to fix problems. It's, it's ingrained into us. And that's the hardest thing I've had to learn is to be a better listener, right? Because mm -hmm. I go out and do speaking events and people want to come up and talk to you. And they don't tell you the best story, but they want to tell you their story. And sometimes, it's, and I get goosebumps, and, and if I get emotional, I'm sorry, but sometimes for people, that's the first time they've ever told that story. Yeah. And yeah. I'm honored for that fact, and I need to be respectful of that. And another thing I had to learn is to be a hugger, because I wasn't a hugger. You know, people oh. want to come up and hug you and, and say things to you and stuff. And I, I've had to learn to know that that's, that's okay. I am. That, that was Bring that shit up. <laughs> you know, that, that was a hard one for me. Um, but, you know, it, it's, 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 it's tough. It's not easy. Um, Rachel, I, I, I truly appreciate you sharing your story. And, and, and Joe, I, I would like for you to, you know, what is, what does trigger Joe do that <sighs> keeps him from having a bad day when you start going down that road? Because I know that, there's, uh, I know there's guys out oof. there. Now, who are like you that are listening right now that are going to answer that want to know the answer to that question 
the, because uh, they might I have think, been in that position. Go ahead, Kevin. I only want to interject Kevin. because the timeline wise, what do you do after you call the consulary or what do you do <laughs> before you? So, you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> It is, it is usually one of my first steps is to make a phone call. Yeah. Um, but for those that cannot, um, whew, man, telling yourself, um, hey, maybe this day isn't going to go the way you fucking planned it. Yeah. Start over. Okay. Start from right now. That did not work out. Okay. That didn't go well. You're irritated. How are you going to react to it? Are you going to exacerbate the problem or come up with the solution to it? Because your day just got flipped on this year and it happens to all of us all the time. Cause I'm a planner. If I lay shit out, I want to go down that way. And it doesn't, it rarely does. And so that is my biggest trigger when things come out like that, where it's like, Not everything needs an instant reaction because usually the first thing that comes out of my mouth is something I wish like a quarterback when he throws that interception, he knows he threw it. You just want to reel it back in. It's it's too late. You said it. Um, That is a lot. That is the triggered part comes from that is Joe will be the guy in the room that addresses a problem almost instantly. And then everyone stops and looks like. I, I didn't realize why did he say that so loud? Cause they don't know he's deaf in one ear. Like, right. like I got to realize how I'm coming off in public also, you know, um, I, I met a guy one time in a program that said uh, he doesn't pick up a drink. And when he wants to drink, he plays the tape. And what he meant by that was, where does it stop? After you pick it up, crack it. Where does that story end? Mm-hmm. run it run run it in your head real quick if you have the guts to be honest look at those reactions you're gonna get and that five seconds of playing the tape can save you from a catastrophe of events especially someone with the temper that i have uh it's in there you know and uh my wife told me, she's she's got a quote that she told me uh um i'm gonna screw it up but i'm gonna uh say it the best way I can where uh, it's an Indian saying where they say there's two wolves inside everybody. I'm sure Rachel's probably heard this one. You guys probably all have some people might not have, but there's two wolves in everyone, you know, the, and, and she described the one and, and it's basically, there's one good and there's one bad. And the, it's a, it's a grandson or it's a elder man explaining it to a younger man. He said, which wolf wins? And he says, the one you feed. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Man, it's been so long since I've told myself, you know, doom's not around the corner. It's okay to it's okay to enjoy this day. Yeah. You know, and I lived like that for a long time, and it's like a tumor. Mm-hmm. It, it'll eat you alive. Because what it does is, on your best days, you still have that in the back of your mind, like something's coming, something's gonna, the other shoe's gonna drop, the bottom's gonna fall out the sense of like impending doom because there always has been, there's always something awful that you got to get with. And it's like, if you don't have to right now, for God's sakes, don't, don't give yourself a preview of it. If it is coming, I mean, you're going to deal with it when it happens, but you're, you're losing right now. Yeah. You're losing right now by doing that. So a lot of times in the moment, I just, I'll sit back and think if I react to this the way I want to, what's going to happen. Yeah. And uh, it's 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 kept me being able to come home, and uh, when your actions make it so you break promises to your kids, yeah, that's the hard one. That's bottom for me. You know, that's bottom for me, and it happened. You know, and I'm that person that went through all that stuff. He's still here. I still deal with that 18 year old arrogant one to fight idiot inside of me all the time. It's he didn't go away. It's just, I started dealing with it differently, you know? Um, But knowing that your life has value, placing value on your own existence and, 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 and the ripple effect of what happens if you take yourself away from the people that care about you 
if you've ever been around how catastrophic a suicide's ripple effect is, uh, I have. Um, you, you, there, there's a better day out there, you know? Yeah, today didn't go the way you wanted it to. But if you can take the hits, if you can keep getting up, and I, and I, there's a movie, and I'm kind of rambling, but there's a movie that uh, I always think of, and that's uh, Ali with Will Smith, which he did a phenomenal move, uh, job in. He gets tagged when he's fighting uh, Ken Norton hard, and he's rocked, and it does an internal dialogue in the movie. And he said, uh, he said, you've been in this room before. Get up. Get up and get out. And, and he's kind of, because he's wobbled, and he's kind of, basically, a lot, a lot of fighters call it going to the dark room when they get KO'd. And he, and he tells himself, get up and get out. And I tell myself that all the time. Like, you, you've been here before. Life's not ending right now. Get up and get out. Get up and get out and do something productive to get your mind off of this. Yeah. And, and, you know, if I can't call Kevin, that's usually my process. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's one, that's one A. Yeah. <laughs> Rachel, Rachel was, uh, when, when my, when my son was being born and I hated my job and my life and existence in North Carolina outside of being home, she, I think, I think I overloaded her with so much <laughs> that I stopped, I stopped calling Rachel for a counsel because I was like, I might want to put some work in on myself because it's been about two months of the same Joe and chaos. And, uh, that's why I switched over to calling Kevin a little bit more. <laughs> well, but uh, you know, on the other hand, you want to say hi. One of the things that is true ab about both hi. Uh, that is true about both Joe and and Kevin is that um, is I'm not known for not saying the truth and saying the hard shit. Yeah. Excuse me. I'm so sorry. Um, but she can't hear I, uh, oh, the dialogue. Good. She. Oh, saying. okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> But, um, you know, in, invariably, Joe, Joe may not tell me he's, he's hearing me in this moment, but when he comes back, he has processed, he has done that work, he has processed, he has utilized some of the tools that I've given him, and, and he comes back, um, and he does it. And, you know, I, I work with, I'm a coach, I'm not a therapist, um, yeah. I'm a certified life coach, and that is who I work with are people who do, who dig in no matter how painful and, and uncomfortable it is. And they do that work. And it's, um, and so he'll come back and he'll go, you know what? I thought about what you said and blah, blah, blah. And then he'll, and, and he'll just, and he will be literally a different person yeah. and he will, and he hasn't gone backwards, you know, Joe, I mean, you don't go backward. It's like, he'll have another bad thing but he doesn't have to go back through the shit pond mm -hmm. um, that, that, that he just went through. Well, that guy isn't very tactical. You know, Pardon? That, 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 that mindset isn't, that mindset isn't very uh, successful tact tactically. Yeah. Um, you know, when you, when you instantly knee jerk react to things, you're not being, you're not critically thinking. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, that's, you know, that's, where the the pansy comes in for me and the shirt that Kevin's wearing is stop being a pansy and take the pain for a second. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Good just point. let it, let it, let it sit with you for a minute yeah. instead of saying, I'm, I shouldn't be feeling this at all. Well, it's yeah. too late for that. So we sit are. with it for a minute, address it and see what happens. And, yeah. and that's the part about, you know, everybody gets triggered. Yeah. Just don't sit there and be like, well, you know, why is my day effed up and feel bad? For you? Don't right. do that because it's not productive. It's not going to work. Yeah. You know, so that's where the pansy part comes in for me is like, you know, be an adult and 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 realize sometimes you get a knife to the ribs. No. Uh, now, what are you going to do with it? Yeah. You know, you know, are you going to fix it or are you just going to lay down? Yeah. And, um, you know, that, that answer for most people. Even in the, even in the worst times in their life, there's an answer in their life that tells them to get up. Yeah. Whether they choose to pay attention to it or not, you know, I don't have the luxury of not being productive. I have responsibilities. I have people yeah. that depend on me, you know, and that's, that's something that I always have to tell myself is like in those moments, uh, do I want to rearrange that guy's face? Sure. But that instant gratification, how much is it going to cost your wife? Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, you gotta, you gotta think about stuff along those lines as to, 
the consequences for instantly knee jerk reacting and sit with it for a second. It's not so going to kill you. Around the you're never going to process yeah. it. If every time you just start throwing punches. Yeah. You know, it's a, it, you know what I mean? It's kind of like doing it with a blindfold on. Like you it, just want to, or, or slapping at mosquitoes. Like you, you, you've got to like sit with it for a second, let it needle at you and go, okay, how am I going to fix this? You know, which yeah, is a very hard process it, for some people. Especially it is. Me. You know, I, I tell you, and you guys don't know the story, but when I was 16, I damn near beat a kid to death. Uh, he was 18 yeah. and had my buddy not pulled me off. I would have done it. And I didn't like my, I didn't like that. And so I don't ever allow myself to get that mad ever yeah. because I know where, if there's not somebody there to stop me, I'm not going to stop. I, I know, know that. I did 17 years over a street fight, yeah. 17 years of his life. Over that kid a spent, fight. spent seven days in the hospital, three days in intensive care. Yeah. And Got a scholarship to Ohio state play football. Yeah. 17 so. years old, beat a kid to death. And yeah, I mean, those mean. consequences are huge. Yeah. 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 One wrong, one wrong, one wrong fall, one wrong anything. You know, you hit a guy that's got a pre-existing condition or something. He yeah. drops dead. Like, I mean, you willing to trade your life for it? No. You yeah, know? but you don't think about it at that time. No. That whiskey, that whiskey will numb me out right now, and I can probably get more at the store. But are you willing to trade your life for it? Yeah. You know that that's 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 what I have to tell myself because mm -hmm. um, I've paid. You know, I I've, I've put myself in a place where. There, there is not another affordable mistake in that category. Yeah. There is not, there is no more free punches. There is no more getting pulled over and talking my way out of the next time for either one of those. And, and life changes permanently. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's something you got to tell yourself in that moment. Yeah. So I just avoid it. If somebody, like sure. you said, I just, I just walk away. I'm like, I know it's going to end let, and let it's him, not going to end well you're for scared. you. You'll go home that night. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I remember one night we was at a, at a bar and, my wife was with me and my buddy and we're just sitting at the bar and this guy kept bumping into me and I was uh, like, Hey dude, cut it out, you know, quit it. And he did it the second time. And I told, and I would told my wife the third time I asked him to do something nicely. I'm going to hit him. I'm done. I'm done being nice. And she said that he hit me. He bumped into me again. And she said the whole demeanor on my face changed. Mm -hmm. And I turned around. I'm getting used to it because I knew when I turned around, I was going to feed him his F and T. And the second I turned around, she grabbed a hold of me and pulled me out of that bar because she knew exactly where it was going to go. Yep. You know, and think if you got a woman that can goodness. do that in that moment, yeah, you better hang on to her because because uh, that's that my, years, so. my wife's the only one. Yeah, but she that recognized could get in my face in that moment, and, yeah. and I would I I'd, I'd have to stop. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. She grabbed me and pulled me out. And, you know, it's, it's just sure. it's just one of those things. And thank God she because it would have. You know, and my buddy Scott that was with me, he's a Navy SEAL. Mm -hmm. I mean, that wouldn't bode well for anybody in there. Yeah. You know, it just takes a special woman things. to put up with our shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that ain't no Truth. doubt. That ain't no doubt. <laughs> you may get the best of me, but you're going to get the worst too because we live together. That's what I, that, that, that's, that's what I always say. Yeah. Yeah. Truth. Better, you're getting the whole or, thing. You get me on the bad ones too. Well, and the longer you're together, I mean, you just, it's just going to come out. Right. So mm. it's, it's them knowing the moments. And we're all going to have, yeah. have good and bad moments in a relationship. That's just how it is. Yep. Um, but you know, as, as we wrap up here, I want to, I want to caveat that to, Hey, listen, if, if you were listening to our show today and it was a triggering event for you, just know that that's okay. Uh, you know, Rachel brought up a good point. She has a list of friends that she can call and that, and Joe does the same thing. Uh, you know, pick up the phone and call the veterans crisis number is listed, you know, down below in the chat, you know, when this airs, uh, pick that up and press one and get a hold of somebody. You know, my wife always said this and she did a video. And in the video, she said, and I repeat this every time I go out to a speaking event, I'd say it all the time. Even if you don't think you're important, you're important to somebody and they love you and they want you here tomorrow, you know? And so I, I get it. You cannot say Cliff Bauman doesn't understand what I'm going through. I guarantee you I do because I went from A and as close to Z uh, completing suicide that you can get. I know what it's like not to want to see the sun in the morning. I know what it's like not want to see the moon at night. I don't want it's like not even want to get out of fucking bed. I get that. But I also know what it's like had I been successful that night and my brother not find me. All the things in my life I would have missed out on. I would have missed out on meeting you guys. I would have missed out on my two sons. I would have missed out on my wife. So all that good I would have missed out outweighs the bad that I was feeling at that moment. 
Sure. And it's very important to ask for help when it's a molehill and not let that become a mountain. Because when it's a mountain in front of your face, it's harder and harder to chip away and get around it. I know that because I was that person. And I was that person who didn't pick up the phone and ask for help because I thought it would make me less of a man because that's how I was raised and that's how I grew up. And I have to realize that that, that's absolutely the wrong way to be thinking. That me going and asking for help and, and just wanting to know that it's okay not to be okay on that day or at that moment and not to go down that road like Joe was saying, where is this going to lead? If I'm going to start drinking, where is that going to lead? And I remember mm-hmm. the night that I got refrighted, I got that phone call. I was drinking and I walked up to my bedroom and I woke my wife up and I was, I was in tears. And I said, I don't want to drink no more because I knew where I was going to go. Yep. And, but I'd been down that road before and I had to stop it, you know, and I stopped it because I knew where that road goes. And I, and I didn't like that. I didn't like, I don't like Cliff Bauman being that way. Cliff Bauman's most times a happy go lucky guy and I'll give you a shirt off my back. Uh, but I don't like those days where I'm not quite myself or I'm in that dark hole or whatever. And I try to pull myself out and some days are easier and some days are harder, but every day I do it because, you know, I, I, this is a, a meme and it's a saying that I say, and I came up with it myself. You know, we can't change the past, but we have the power to change tomorrow, you know, and it's your choice whether you're going to change tomorrow or not. You can't do anything about the past. It's in the past, but you can change what you do tomorrow. And I, and I think that's very important. I want to say thanks to everybody that tuned in tonight. Uh, this is probably going to be a three part series, I imagine. Um, but I appreciate you. you guys go out there and be a mental health warrior this week and take care. <laughs>